Power Z. My name's Stan, and today we're going to go visit a job site. I know a lot of you guys like these job site uh, visits, but what we're going to do specifically is take a look at how we run multiple motors off a single VFD and how we control it and how we uh, distribute the power and make everything interlocked. And then, you know, after I show you the video, we're going to come back here and we'll draw it on the board and show you in this application uh, uh, how we use a VFD to run uh, multiple motors and how we, I'm not going to say variable speed it, but we are going to do a three tier or a three step um, um, programming on the unit. And we have to tie this into a, uh, some other motors and things in there. Well, let's go take a look at the job site and then uh, that'll help you understand the job site requirements. Up on a roof in beautiful Palmdale, California. For anybody that wonders, that is the Lockheed Martin building over there. We're directly across the street from Lockheed Martin. That's Edwards Air Force Base behind it. And we're doing swamp coolers that work really good in this dry climate. Uh, roofers just left. We just finished some curbs. So we've got the main uh, penetration curb. That's where the duct passes through. Inside you got a blower and a motor. The duct passes uh, out the bottom of the uh, air handler. And then there's a little auxiliary curb right there. I'm going to take you over and show you what those are all about. These are for uh, the cooling section. These are the media type cooling sections. They got a one foot thick media, uh, kind of a honeycomb. And this is what they look like. So there's a blower section and a cooling section, no heat. That's how the curbs went down. Here, I'll flash you to a picture of what the curbs looked like before they got roofed. And we got service disconnects. And we cut all the curbs so they sit, so the coolers sit plumb and level because they have a water tank in them. So anyways, we're just finishing up on the roof. I'll take you down and show you how we're controlling these. We're actually controlling all four of these coolers with one big frequency drive. And I'll show you how that's done. I've gone over this on my channel before, but I'm going to show you how to control multiple motors uh, with one VFD. And then the, the makeup air is for these three air handlers here. Those are uh, exhausts. Those are going down to uh, spray booths. So this is an aerospace refinishing company, but the building needed air makeup. And uh, that's what we're do here doing today. Let's go downstairs and have a peek. Okay, so this is what we got downstairs. We got a big 20 horse freak drive. This is the one with the dis disconnect built into it. There's no power to it yet. This is what uh, we've installed. So we got a 20, 20 horse drive, but it's going out to four swamp coolers. Those four pipes there are going into this little panel we've whipped into here, and we've got four individual overload blocks. So if any one of these trips, it's going to take away the run command from the uh, uh, VFD, and it's also going to, uh, um, you know, shut down, obviously, but it'll shut down all four if any one cooler goes into an, into an overload condition. Now what we also have is we had to enable these three spray booths and these have a shunt inside um, I'll go ahead and get these four or these three booths started you can see we're using a run enable relay and right now I got the little latches up it can be manually operated and we've got see the little orange window but when I flip here I'm gonna flip this little switch and watch what happens to our spray booths that just all that does is trip a shunt there's a shunt inside that actually physically clicks this into the off position. And now with that relay not enabled, my little switch right here is down. Now I, I, get, I get nothing. So I, I can't turn on. So you have to enable here 
and this will be enabled when the VFD is up and running. So the air makeup has to be running. So as soon as this uh, enable relay is closed, what does that tell us? It tells us that all our overloads are made and none of these are in the trip position and that the VFD is up and online and running. So all, all that criteria has to happen for that relay to close and then only at that point do we get a run on our spray boost. So that doesn't allow uh, um, the building to ever have a negative condition. But that's the whole system. And this, this system got piecemealed together. The booths were ordered from one company and then uh, like eight months later they said, hey, we want uh, air makeup. So, because they had to spray, used to have to spray with the doors open and uh, in the hot summer months, all they get is a bunch of hot air in the doors. So they wanted some cool, cooling and they wanted some filtered air. So that is uh, the interlock between the air makeup and the exhaust, all right? Let's take you over and show you the intake plenums we built for the, uh, um, for the coolers. You can see our framing. And you can see our duct coming through the roof there. We did a, here actually I'll flash you to a picture of the, uh, we had a double frame to carry the load. Uh, we'll flash you a picture of some of that roof framing. And then when, and then we built these uh, sheet metal filter boxes. So we got filters all the way around. And those are in four places. Within the building. So they get clean filtered air. There's one way over there. Alright. But there's things that are in the building that can't be run negative and let's, we'll talk about that real quick one of them is this infratube heater right here so you got a vent pipe going out through the roof and then that's a big infratube heater that runs all the way down here and then down here we've got a, a little blower set a little blower and burner section on that resnor and I like that skylight's probably blowing you out there you go so there's a little blower unit up there and that's a premix burner that mixes fuel and shop air together and spits it into that tube and it has to create a very specific condition for that thing to fire correctly. Now, if we were to run these spray boosts with the doors closed, that thing's gonna backdraft. It's not gonna operate properly and we'll probably get a flame out or some flame failures and things like that on that heater. So the air makeup is very important for things like that. All right, so I just thought I'd show you around. There's the, there's the three boosts we're making up for. So there's three, three spray boosts over there. And your air makeups. Alright guys, this shop's almost ready to go online. Some of you might, might recognize that. Gas fired oven. We ran the vent for that while we were here too. We did a bunch of mechanical work for him. So we had to run his, uh, uh, his hot pipe up from that. This is actually a very nice oven made by JPW. And there's another premix type burner. Gas train. I'll let you take a peek inside real quick. How'd that be? Would you like to see inside this, this thing? just for carts and racks and things like that. They're, they're using this for dehydrating, so they'll run this about 300 degrees to dehydrate parts. And this oven hasn't even been started up yet. See, the, the, the louvers aren't even open yet. All those louvers are still closed. These you adjust them just by, just by pushing these in. To adjust the air balance. Okay. Pretty nice. Okay, so we're up here on the roof and uh, working on all our swamp coolers. There's one I just finished putting together. This one I'm, uh, you know, I had them all open. We're, uh, our blowers are blow blowing. 
our pumps are pumping, our floats are floating, our motors are motoring. We're doing everything we're supposed to be doing. Anyways, I've got all four of these synchronized on a uh, single VFD. I'm running them all at 55 hertz, so I'm below tag amperage and uh, below rated uh, RPM. And I've got a real good balance in the building right now. So I'm going around and uh, just checking the floats, make sure none of the floats are set too high. It's not rocket science, it's just a simple little float there. You just bend the rod to get your tank level right. And we're checking to make sure our uh, all our media is wetted, which it is. You can see it's it's gotten very dark. This was a very light tan when we started. And the pumps have been running for, oh, I don't know, about 10 or 15 minutes. But we've got a nice wetted uh, media there. So we're, we're checking all those. And just going through and, and looking everything over, making sure the belts are good. And, you know, if anything's going to happen uh, to the blowers, usually happens in about the first 15 minutes. So I'm just kind of hanging out here, closing them up, listening for any funny noises and stuff like that. So after I get all these buttoned up, there's the third one, there's the fourth one. I'll take you back downstairs and show you what's going on uh, with the controller and how I controlled this to synchronize all four. Okay, so we got our drive installed. There's our target. Uh, um, frequency which is 55 Hertz we're here in the United States so that's 60 Hertz is our uh, native uh, frequency <coughs> and you can see down here we've got four um, overload blocks and you can see the switch gear on top is wired in in series so that if any one of those trips it removes the run command from the VFD and see right now we're not we can't run a spray booth I got nothing on any of these all right but I am gonna there's a little defeat I've got right here on that relay which tricks it into thinking that it's uh, on so we're gonna go ahead and start the spray booths and I'm gonna show you how and right now we're not running air makeup in here so I'm gonna show you how negative the building is I got a plastic bag here, and you can see the amount of air coming in that door right now. All right, so it's it's pretty negative. Let's go fire up the air makeup. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my release, and that's gonna trip all these boots. And now what we're gonna do. is uh, fire the air makeup and I've given them a control switch here it's uh, it's run and run plus cooling so we're gonna go ahead and fire up the VFD and you see it's ramping up to its target so the VFD is up and running all four air makeups are running those are those uh, filter boxes up there and now we're going to take a look at the positive pressure in the building. Now, now we've just gone the opposite way. And see, there's our bag getting pulled out. You can even see that bush back there blowing in with the air blowing out of here. So we are very positive now. Let's fire some spray boosts and see how we did. We already started this up, so I already know how we did. Everything's up to speed. And there's our bag, just sitting there dead, not sucking in, not blowing out. We are neutral. Uh, I didn't bring a gauge with me to check building pressure, but that's a setup there for running four motors off of one VFD. As long as you want all the motors to do all the same thing, um, it's wonderful, you know, and it's nice to have a VFD. You know, you can change the airflow just by altering the frequency a little bit and getting, uh, you know, adjusting your airflow a little bit and get it dialed in. I'm pretty happy with the way it runs at 55 hertz. 
So we're going to leave it like that. If you know if something changes uh, and the building starts to run either negative or positive, we can always make a small alteration. I've got a little bit of you know, I got a little bit of headroom here. I can take it all the way up to 60, or I can trim a little bit off. It doesn't matter. So if something changes, I can uh, make alterations on it pretty easily. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed uh, how to run multiple motors off of one VFD. And now that everything's up and running, air makeup and boost. If I were to remove a run command here, we're gonna remove, we're gonna flip the shunt on all these. So they cannot run the spray boost without the air makeup. Now they can run the air makeup without the spray boost. We don't care about that. We don't care if the building goes positive, but bad things happen when you let your building go negative. All right. Okay, we got a bunch of stuff drawn on the board. I'm going to go, like I usually do, I'm going to go through them and show you all the different components and tell you what they do and what they're for and their intended use. And then we're going to draw some wiring lines. We're going to wire them all together and make this thing work. First of all, we've got a 230 volt, three phase power supply going to the air makeup VFD. Uh, this is a 20 horse VFD. You can see I've got four cooler motors that I'm running. Those are only uh, three horsepower piece, so that equates to uh, 12 horsepower worth of load on a 20 horse VFD. We've got some headroom if they ever want to add another cooler. So the VFD is oversized. We've got some control strips here that I need to wire in. I went ahead and wired all my power wiring, uh, black, red, blue, all come through, three phases in, three phases out, and then it gets distributed between these overload blocks. We've got four overload blocks. We've got four overload contacts, and we've got four motors that we're running. We've got a run enable switch. We've got three airflow switches on three existing spray boosts that are sitting there that we're going to wire in. We have a coil of a uh, enable relay, and we have uh, normally closed contacts within that uh, relay. So this is all encompassed here. We have three shunts that actually trip the spray booths and will turn them off if the air makeup's not running. Let's get it wired up. Okay, let's start with a color. Let's just pick uh, orange. I got a bunch of colors here. So first of all, let's issue a run command. Um, off of the VFD, uh, we're coming off the common terminal. Uh, it's marked as C. You need to check your paperwork and program your VFD and use your terminal numbers because they're all going to change from brand to brand. Uh, we're going to come off the common terminal, and we're going to come all the way over to a run switch. Out of that run switch, we're going to, we're going to start heading to uh, the overload normally closed contacts, and we're going to run those in series. We're going to come back up and go to terminal one. Terminal one gets programmed for uh, run enable. That, get, that issues a start command. So when we do this, that drive goes to whatever my maximum uh, drive speed is. In this case, I think it was 54 or 55 hertz. Okay, so it's gonna go to that, uh, that particular speed when I issue a run command. Now we're gonna, let's throw a wild card in there. We got three airflow switches mounted on three different spray booths. These are Electromechanical devices, there's no uh, real electrical interlock to the booth outside of a airflow tube that goes into each exhaust duct that senses when the booth is running and it is creating airflow. Uh, when those do run, the, these switches close. So once again, we're going to come off the common terminal. We'll do that in orange again. We're going to come off the common terminal. We're going to go up to each individual airflow switch okay I got some black mixed in with my orange there okay and then uh, I don't know let's pick something else. let's pick a purple to come back off of air airflow switch one two and three we're gonna come back and go to terminal number two airflow switch two we're gonna go to terminal three airflow switch three Terminal four. Now, what the way I'm going to program terminals number two, three, and four? I'm going to put these three speeds in there. If it gets one command, 
it's going to go to 34 hertz. If it gets two commands, it goes to 44 hertz. If it gets all three commands, it goes to 54 hertz. So if it doesn't get any commands, it runs at full speed. So they can use the air makeup to feed the building and cool the building. But if they start using spray booths, it's going to run, it's going to run at any of these three speeds. Okay, that takes care of the automatic, uh, how the VFD knows which booth is running. Uh, and it can be any combination. They could be off on off and it's going to go to the lowest speed. They could run any two, doesn't matter which two, it's going to go to the medium speed. There's enough logic in that VFD that you can program that in there. Okay, next up, so we can we can run the uh, we can run the VFD and we can sense booth. Now we need to enable the booths. Now the um, the spray booth has its own native voltage, which is 120 volts. And I'm going to use yellow because it's my lightest color. Hopefully you can see that as uh, neutral. So this is the spray booth power and it's coming into the control enable relay. We're going to come down. We're going to hit the, uh, well, that's a terrible color. Let's pick something else. Let's go with a, let's try light blue. Let's see how that goes. Okay. There's your neutral. Oh, that's better. Okay. So we're going to come down. We're going to hit the coil there. And then we're going to come down here uh, and hit each one of these shunts. So each shunt's already got neutral going to it. All right. Next up, uh, let's, we'll use, uh, maybe, uh, let's use dark blue for our power wiring. This is going to be your hot wire right here. All right. So we need to come down and we're going to come down here. And we're going to hit each one of these contacts. Now these are normally closed contacts. So when this coil is not energized, these switches are closed. And out of these one, two, and three, we're going down to those shunts. So when this thing is just sitting idle, those shunts are energized and that, that trips those uh, handles you saw in the video. So they can't run the booth at, Right now, at this point, they cannot run the booth until we come out of, uh, we've got an auxiliary contact here in the BFD, terminals number five and six. Uh, it's a programmable contact. It is going to be open when the BFD is off. It's going to be closed when it receives a run command. So we're going to come off that 120 volt. We're going to come over and hit terminal five. We're going to come out of the switch and come back down to our coil down here. That switch isn't very good, is it? There we go. So as soon as that VFD gets its run command, this switch closes, we power up this coil. As soon as this coil powers up, we open all these switches and remove the power from those shunts and allow the operator to go in and turn those, um, those, those circuits on. As soon as he starts turning those on, our airflow switches are going to start closing and the drive will receive a run command for whatever speed is, is you know, uh, suitable for that, uh, for that configuration. So that's the logic we built into the system. I know it's very complicated. It is for advanced users only. Um, that's the way I programmed it. It runs really good. I'm super happy with the way this uh, system turned out. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you enjoy these kind of job site videos and uh, we'll see you on the next one.